In the years leading up to World War II, Gail Halverson, a young man from Tremont in Utah, was working long days on his father's sugar beet farm. Stopping occasionally to watch airplanes fly across the Utah skies, Halverson found his inspiration to become an aviator. And the airplane to come over the blue sky headed north. And so when I saw that airplane up there, well, man, I'd like to do that, I'd like to do that. In 1941, with the conflict in Europe heating up, the United States began planning for war. The need for new pilots was crucial. The um, government knew that we were going to probably get in a conflict. And they didn't have enough pilots. So they started a non-college pilot training program. And I saw that as a man, sign me up. Halverson joined the Army Air Corps and trained as a fighter pilot with a group of British pilots in Oklahoma. But when training was complete, he was given the job of flying cargo planes. I was disappointed. You know, you do what you're ordered to do. And uh, so I, I made the most of it got me in a position to drop parachutes, but with candy bars instead of bombs. Halverson remained in the Air Force after World War II. Flying C-74 Globemasters and C-54 Skymasters, Halverson knew he was needed when the Soviet Union blockaded Berlin. He volunteered to fly in the Berlin Airlift. Each month it got increasingly clear that we were having some real trouble with the Soviet Union. So I volunteered to to fly the airlift. During the 15-month Berlin airlift, American and British pilots delivered more than two million tons of supplies to the devastated city. But it was Halverson's decision to airdrop candy to the local children that gave the Americans a huge public relations victory over the Soviet Union. While taking home movies of the bombed out remains of Berlin from Tempelhof Airport, Halverson encountered a remarkable group of German children. Suddenly on the other side of the bar bar, and I was wearing my uniform, of course, were about 30 kids, right up against the bar bar. Immediately, it was obvious they were friendly. They talked to me about, it. well, what you got in the airplane? 20,000 pounds of flour. We got plenty of dried potatoes, dried eggs. Kids, eight, eight to 15. And he said, now it's, now it's spring and summer. The weather's good in Berlin. But you wait until fall comes, if it's still on, and the snow and the ice, and you can't get in here. When that happens, don't worry about us. We don't have to have enough to eat. Just don't give up on us. Someday we'll have enough to eat. We we'll lose our freedom. We'll never get it back. Kids fresh out of, out of Hitler. Give me a lesson, American, and how important freedom was. I stood there amazed. Halverson got the idea to drop chocolate bars and candy to the children below. To help them identify his aircraft out of the hundreds making up the Berlin airlift, he devised a way of signaling the children when he was approaching. I'll wiggle the wings of that big air four inch airplane. And when we see that, that's got it. They said, Get out of here, let's start this thing. So I went back to, to Rhine Mine then and, and went to my co pilot. He said, Give me a ration. We couldn't buy it all in one. Give me a ration. Well, four. You are? You got permission? No, you're gonna get us in trouble. I haven't got enough stuff for 30 kids. So the, the co-pilot gave me the ration. I had three rations, three weeks of rations, chocolate bars, big double handful of chocolate bars. So I, before I went on the mission, I tied the candy bar on the end of strings on a parachute and threw it out to loft the barn to get the best way to pack it, how to roll it. And uh, some of the guys saw me do it. So what you doing? I said, I'm just experimenting. I wouldn't do what anybody to know about. I said my crew. I said, don't tell anybody or we'd get me in trouble. And then the next day before noon, came over to Berlin, came over, the, it was clear. And there's those 30 kids in a knot, right on the approach before the barbed bar fence. They hadn't told a single soul, I'm sure. And wiggled the wings and they just blew up. Came around over the top of them and he shoved it out. Couldn't tell where it went. So when he taxied out to take off, though, we had to go along the barbed wire fence. And there through the barbed wire were three handkerchief parachutes on the end of arms, waving at all the airplanes, and their mouths were all going up and down. And we all waved at them and said, holy cow, I hope nobody saw that. 
Halverson's humanitarian ideas spread. Soon, other pilots were donating their candy rations to the effort. The top brass at Tempelhof got wind of his candy bombing and made it an official practice. In 14 months' time, Halverson's squadron dropped a quarter of a million parachutes carrying candy to the children of West Berlin. Reflecting back, uh, well, that's unbelievable to me. I was amazed as much as anybody about uh, what the effects were. Gail Halverson made a huge impact on German perceptions of Americans after the war. Today, Halverson is known worldwide as the chocolate pilot, Uncle Wiggly Wings, and the candy bomber. <laughs>